Hello everyone, Craig Ripley here. Welcome once again to another episode of Living Off the Slab. So today I thought what I would do is introduce you to, well, a little new member of my stable here, and that is my new Yamaha WR250R. Now, I know some of you might be saying, Craig, you're 60 years old, why the hell would you wanna buy something like that? But, see, I have it in my head that I want to do some of the backcountry discovery routes, and I want to do some of the a little bit more hardcore sections. So I want a bike that uh, is capable of doing that and something that I don't have to worry about dropping and, and paying all kinds of huge bucks to fix it after I do so. So that's kind of what I have in mind with this thing. So as I mentioned, I've got it in my head that I want to do these backcountry discovery routes and some more off-road riding, right? And so that's what this little bike is about. So you may know that if you've been following my channel anyway, that uh, when I got back from my 60 day trip uh, last year, I decided to look at getting something a little bit different. So I ended up picking up a BMW K1600 GTL that's gonna serve as my two up touring bike for my wife and I. Uh, and I decided at that time that I was probably gonna get rid of my Victory Vision because I just don't need two big touring bikes. The Victory has been an amazing bike, or it was an amazing bike, and uh, it served both of us well. It carried us to all kinds of great places in comfort, but in the end, I've had it for 10 years, and I just thought that it was time for a change. So earlier this year, just before we all got locked down, I headed up to Mom's Motorcycles of Manchester in Foxborough, Massachusetts, and I traded in my Victory Vision, right, and another little bike that we had uh, that Kathy was riding, a Hyosung 250, and I picked up this bike. So uh, Mom's gave me a, a fair price for the trade-in on the Victory. They're not worth a whole lot of money right now. You can pick them up, you know, for about a song. Um, but they gave me uh, a good price on it uh, and a trade-in on Kathy's bike and this thing right here cost me a couple grand, All right? So normally it's uh, a $7,000 motorcycle. This is a 2020. It's a brand new bike. But being that I was able to trade in my other bikes and said just put down a couple thousand dollars extra, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Now, of course, the WR is a dual sport bike made to go on road and off road. Right? And what I want to do with it is to take it and do kind of a mini adventure build, right? We've got a 250 motorcycle here and I want to build it up as a little adventure bike that will allow me to uh, go down, maybe ride some back roads, do a little bit of highway speeds and get down to the start of something like the Mid-Atlantic BDR or the Northeast BDR and then ride that ride for a few days and then at the end I got to get back home again. So we want to make a bike that uh, is capable of doing that kind of ride. So as I'm making this video we are still of course in lockdown mode, right? We we can get out and we can ride and I've been doing that. I've put a few miles on this, but all of the trailheads are closed. There are a couple of places where I can ride off road close to me here, uh, but those are closed. I can't get into them. Um, and our weather's been kind of crappy up here lately as well, but hopefully that is turning around and I hope that, you know, somewhere around the first or second week of May, we can start to get back to normal around here again. So in the next two or three weeks, I want to finish this build up so I can then hit the road in May and June and again, start doing some of these kinds of rides. So the first thing that I did as an upgrade to this bike was to go out and get myself a Row Electronics PDM60. And that stands for Power Distribution Model 60. It's an uh, electronic device that acts as both your fuse box and your relays. You have six circuits on it and it'll handle up to 60 amps and you can set these circuits uh, however you need to uh, to accommodate the accessories that you want to put on the bike. Uh, 
Now I have one on my Yamaha Super Tenere and it's worked great. So I wanted to put one on the WR as well. Now one of the things that was a little challenging was trying to find a place to put the PDM60 on the WR250. The Tenere has big side covers I can take off and has plenty of space back there that I was able to tuck it in between the wires. But on the WR, it was a little more challenging. So what I ended up doing was I ended up taking the side cover off and I found a little, little pocket right here where I could put the PDM60 and it stays pretty well. I don't even have to tie it down or anything with a side cover on. It stays put very easily. Now I'm not going to get into detailed instructions here on how to install it. I did that when I did a video for the Super Tenere. So I'm going to link up there in that left hand corner of the video and you guys can go and check that out if you want to see more details on how to install the PDM60. However, one thing I am going to talk about is where I tapped in for a keyed trigger wire so that it would run the PDM60. And that is, I tapped into the wire that runs the little light bulb uh, that illuminates your license plate. Right? If you trace it back from the license plate assembly, you can find out where it is underneath the left side uh, cover. Uh, there's a white wire and a brown wire. The brown wire is the hot wire. Uh, and I just tapped into that for my trigger wire. And to go along with the PDM60, I wanted to install a GPS. So this is the new Garmin Zumo XT, uh, and I haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot, but so far it seems to be really cool. So let me show you how the PDM60 works with the Garmin. All right, so when you turn the key on, you notice the Garmin doesn't come on right away. There is a seven second delay that would allow you to start the bike without any accessory power draw. After that seven seconds, the Garmin comes on, and one of the pain in the butt things that Garmin is doing now is they make you agree to their license agreement every time you start the device. So, not much I can do about that so far, anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see the Garmin comes on, and you'll notice here that you can run this in portrait as well as landscape mode. So that's one of the cool things about this uh, new GPS. Again, I'll be doing a full review on it as I learn more about the unit. Okay guys, so I think that's it for this video. Just wanted to introduce you to the bike and then also show you what I've done to get the bike ready for some accessories like the Garmin Zumo XT. All right, next time we'll talk about what I've done up here to get the cockpit, the handlebars and everything comfortable for me, right, as I'm turning this into a little mini adventure bike.